Hi guys, my name's Wheezy and you're watching Radioactive. <laughs> Three. All right. Two. One. Well, hello everyone. Welcome to the next installment of Radioactive Podcast. I am your co-host with the most, Ian Troy Eldridge. To the left of me is my commander-in-chief, Victoria Para, and we are joined by the one, the only, Wheezy Wee. Hello. Wheezy, are you ready for the first question to kick I'm so off? fucking ready. Okay, so you are pretty active in the social media world. Mm -hmm. You know, you post regular videos on TikTok. I mostly see on TikTok anyway. Uh, what made you start wanting to be an influencer on social media? What kind of inspired you to do that? Um, so it kind of started really early for me. I remember in sixth grade, I, my best friend, Rosemary and I, we constantly were making videos and just like posting them on YouTube anyway, and just, you know, being stupid kids. And it was basically whenever I started on TikTok, it was an accident. It, you know, I told myself I was never going to download TikTok. I was never going to like, you know, enjoy TikTok or anything because it was a time waster. And I didn't find myself really enjoying social media very often. And all of a sudden I just started like, looking at videos and seeing funny videos. And I was like, you know, some of these things might be fun. And then I just started doing them and started kind of just like escaping through TikTok and making TikToks and, you know, talking to people. And when I started seeing that I could like do it, that's kind of when I was like, okay, I'll just fucking, I'll just keep going into it. I'll just keep doing whatever I'm doing. That's awesome, dude. I tell you what, um, the, the funniest one by far is the milk one. I, that's actually when I first saw you, I think. I don't remember how on earth or who sent it or if I just scrolled upon it by accident, but I lost my freaking mind. I must have watched it like 30 times. You were <laughs> on him. Which milk one? Because I think there's been several. Like when I was drinking milk, when I was talking about it. You were just like, I absolutely fucking hate milk. I call it creamy water. And when you oh, said yeah. creamy mm -hmm. water, I lost my freaking mind. It is creamy water. I still I still stand by what I said. It's still nasty. Would you be at all insulted if I, like, what's the, what's the network or network, the net worth for something, um, like, how does that all, like, get set into motion uh, currency-wise? Like, how do you mean? Like, how do how does the currency kind of move in? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so like on TikTok, it has certain requirements. You have to have like 10,000 followers and you have to have at least 30,000 video views in a month or maybe maybe 10,000. It's very little. At the time when I started really like doing TikTok and really like posting every day and like creating my content, they were paying really, really well. Um, but they've recently, you know, changed that quite a bit. So, you know, it just... There's not really a lot of money in TikTok, at least where I have found it. I think a lot more right now, it's people who are doing like longer TikToks or like very informational TikToks. Those ones mm -hmm. do really well. Um, but yeah, at that time, it was when, you know, really short videos were doing really well. And I don't know. Yeah. I just kind of, you know, you, you meet the requirements and then they're just like, okay, here you go. This is what you're going to be making. And this is what, you know, you give to us. And this is what we give to you. And I don't know, dude, it just, it just happened. <laughs> Well, that's, I can very well imagine you were probably, like, flabbergasted. Your jaw just dropped, like, wow, this, this is, this is yeah. it. It was at a time, so I was, I was in a very abusive relationship for, like, six years, and when I started doing TikTok and started actually, like, making a pretty good wage off of it, I was still having a day job, and I was, I was paying for, my ex's like medical bills and like paying for, you know, like his credit cards and things like that. And he was constantly in and out of work because he, you know, had, he had some medical stuff going on and whatever. And like, just, you know, was not taking care of himself. And he had, him and I had agreed like, okay, we are really fucking strapped for cash. We are going to do an anonymous thing and we're going to just like do something like really nasty and we're not going to talk about it. We're not going to, you know, tell people about it. We're just going to we're going to make money how we can. And that next day I blew up on TikTok and I started making money. And then I was like, okay, we're not doing that. We are, I'm just going to, I'm going to put some money away. I'm going to like, you know, pay what I need to. I'm going to put some away and I'm just going to, we're going to figure it out. 
And I figured out, wow, this shit is not good. I don't want to be in this position anymore. I'd rather <laughs> like have somebody that's responsible and like, you know, you know, that's a, that's a whole nother story in itself. But yeah, I just, it, it came at a perfect time. There was no other time that it could have come for me. Sorry about that. I didn't mean to go off on a tangent. <laughs> no, not at all. That's what we're here for, dude. This is, uh, this is a safe space and that's what we want to do with our fans and we, what we want to do with the people that come on the show. Perfect. So we all have the same goal here. Yes. Love it. Um, what was the main goal you had in mind when you started this journey? Did it was your end game to uh make people laugh? I um, mean, yeah. You know, the end game, there was never really a goal or a plan. It was just like, I'm just gonna do this because I think it's fun and it makes people smile. So I'm just gonna do it. I don't care. It and still even, you know, now I obviously it's now my career, so I care a little bit more about it, but I still find myself like I'm just going to post it. I don't care what people think. I'm just going to post this. You know, it's just, uh, there was no goal. It was just like, you know, kind of escaping, but also just like helping other people kind of feel safe, I guess, and feel, you know, like laughing or, you know, <laughs> yeah, whatever. I don't know. <laughs> I feel like that's a good like mindset to have too, though. Cause like the more videos you post, like some you expect to do super well and then mm -hmm. maybe they won't, but then one stupid one that you're debating about posting, you'll post it and it like just skyrockets, right? Yeah. Like the Pringles one. Who would have <laughs> fucking thought? Who would have fucking thought? Not me. It, it was so funny. And I guess this kind of ties into the next question that we had. You know, you've made so many videos with different like categories i guess whether it was the pringles one uh with the milk or you know the ones where you're just in your car screaming uh do you have any favorite ones that you've done throughout the course of a few years that you just like that one's still your favorite i mean i don't know if i've ever actually had like a favorite tiktok or like video that i've made i mean the pringles one was pretty good i mean i really liked cutting open the pringles and then putting it on my arm I thought those were, that was really fun. Uh, I don't know. I just, I really enjoy like doing all of them. I, you know, I have like 600 drafts that I won't post or, you know, like I just kind of look at and like go back to every now and again. Cause like I make so many, I just, I don't know. I just enjoy making them. I don't know if I could pick a favorite. You are the master of a thousand different hair colors. What has been your favorite color and why? Um, It's the blue that I had last year before I dyed it pink. Um, it was my favorite because I just, I thought it was really pretty. I don't know. Uh, yeah, it was just pretty. I'm trying to think about what other colors I've had. I don't know. Purple's still like, obviously one of the tops. I don't know. <laughs> green was pretty cool. I don't know if you guys ever saw like the like dark emerald green I had for like a month, but I had it for very, very, like a very short amount of time. It was very early on in my TikTok career. So that one was really pretty. Yeah. Blues and greens. We're talking about you know, some of our favorite bands before, more so concerts that we went to see. Uh, but Wheezy, who are some of your favorite bands and artists and how did you discover them? Um, shit. Uh, I really, really like um, Amigo the Devil. He's always been kind of like, not always, but since maybe about four or five years ago, I found Amigo the Devil. Um, I I actually ended up finding him through my ex-boyfriend and we went to a bunch of his concerts and stuff here in Colorado. And um, I don't know, he's always been one of my top. Uh, Rich City Sinners is definitely up there. Uh, they're still in, they're in that same kind of um, genre of like murder folk or, you know, whatever you fucking mm -hmm. want to call it, punk folk. Uh, fuck, who else? Loveless, Loveless is pretty good. I don't know if you know Loveless on- Loveless yeah. is so good. Yeah, he's yeah. a cool guy too. Hobo Johnson. I like Hobo Johnson. Oh my um, God. Billie Eilish is definitely also up there. I really like Billie Eilish. I just really like music too. You know, I just, I like listening to everything. <laughs> All right. Well, since we are on the topic, what bands would you love to see tour together? Uh, I don't know if I have like a specific like, because I know that each like genre will have like bands that tour together. Like, and you know, like, I don't know if I could like create a tour that I want 
you know, like there's, I, I just want to see everybody like, you know, Hobo Johnson and then fucking, uh, you know, just throw some like Billie Eilish in there. I don't know. If gonna... <laughs> well, Hobo Johnson's a rapper, right? Yeah. Yeah. Doesn't he do that song about like how civilization began, how like, okay, there were these little things and they came out on the land and then they grew legs. And then he talks about Donald Trump for a second. I don't know about that. I don't know. I only know about like Subaru Cross Trek and another like a sad one. Hobo. I'm intrigued by this now. I should have bought a Lambo, but I'm not quite there yet. Sometimes I get drunk and I forget what day it is. I wish that I was skinnier, but I love sandwiches. He's funny to listen to. No, he's a cool dude. And I'm like 90% sure the song I'm thinking of is by Hobo Johnson. (laughs) So. (laughs) Like we had mentioned before, you stop laughing. This is a serious topic coming up, and you're laughing. Oh, shit. Yeah, it is. You've got to stop that. (laughs) Okay. Straight faces. Serious business. Okay. All right. 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 right. I'm chill. Okay. So... (laughs) As me and Ian had mentioned before, we create, we want to create a safe environment with this podcast and make everyone feel welcome. So, (laughs) what sort of advice do you have for people who are struggling with cyberbullying or any kind of bullying for that matter? Um, honestly, from my own experience with like, bullying and all of that like you know like cyber stuff just kind of put kindness out putting kindness out feels good and it makes you feel good and that's all that should matter is making yourself feel good you know I mean Mm -hmm. other people will have their opinions but you know they're allowed to be wrong as long as you're like you know not hurting anybody and stuff and you know you're doing something that makes you happy and you know maybe helps other people as well fucking bullies you can fucking suck a fat one I guess I like it a lot, man. I I hear you. I got picked on a tremendous amount in middle school and high school, and it was over something I think is pretty silly, but if I said it out loud, I don't want anyone to judge me kind of weird because it's not uncommon, but it's also like, you know what? <laughs> Now you have to tell us. Now you yeah, have to tell us. Now I'm curious. Is it with on. your, uh, the feet? Uh, no, we're not. We're, no. no. <laughs> Did you say feet? God damn it. I yeah. Guess. All right. There. It's out in the open now. <laughs> hey, I'm going to say this. Dave Chappelle, one of the greatest stand-up comedians of our time, has a foot fetish. All right? <laughs> not, not a shame. Say what you will. Honestly. I just, for me personally, put your dogs away. I don't want no dogs. Your dogs I, away. I don't want to see nice the dogs. dogs. <laughs> <laughs> I had somebody comment that on on a TikTok video once. It was just nice dogs. And I just. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> that's fucking funny. Yeah, at least I'm not afraid of chickens. Okay, that's enough. Chickens yeah, are kind of scary, right? No, they're not. How? They're harmless. <laughs> they're t- no, they're not harmless. They're fucking dicks. Yeah. I don't have anything here. Um, what I do have is another question. <laughs> yeah. I don't really have another analogy here. I well, I don't know. What do you think, man? What do you think? Uh huh. Uh huh. Okay. All right, we'll talk later, man. Peppa Pig is so funny. <laughs> right? Peppa Pig is on another level. Of I feel like if you did a lip, like, uh, you know how in the NFL they, like, put up YouTube videos of, like, people, like, yes. I, over? Yes. Yeah, I feel like, imagine if that was Peppa Pig. And <laughs> just say, good. have Peppa Pig just say the most raunchy, outrageous shit. Just... I think they need to have, like, a Peppa Pig adult comedy. You know, Peppa and George and Mummy Pig and Daddy Pig. How do you know all <laughs> these characters? Because I like Peppa Pig. Do you watch Peppa Pig? <laughs> I have a Peppa Pig coloring little... book. 
I can't do that noise. Do it again. <laughs> I can do the whole Peppa Pig intro. Please. I'm Peppa Pig. And this is my little brother, George. This is Mommy Pig. And this is Daddy Pig. <laughs> All right. So, Wheezy, we came up with a few, like, in your face, like, Jesus Christ, what the hell kind of questions. All right. Um, You're stuck in a haunted house. And the ghost chasing you is a dead celebrity. Who do you want haunting you and why? Betty White. Nice. Wow. Because Betty White is pretty. Or not, I mean, yes, pretty, but also I just think Betty White's so cute. She'd be funny. She'd be sitting there sassing me. <laughs> All right. I... That was an unexpected answer. I was not expecting Betty White. I, was I wasn't not... expecting it either. She was the only one I could think of. <laughs> what about you, Ian? You know quite a handful of celebrities. Dead celebrities. Oh lord. Um not personally no, but you know, no oh, the queen. The, the queen. <laughs> the queen. That was my first thought was the queen. Um dead celebrity. Let's see. Oh gosh. Um the frontman for um oh I got a few here. Uh okay. Keith Ledger. Um, the dude who was in Lincoln Park. Oh, so Chester Bennington. Chester Bennington, because he died on my birthday, and the only reason why I would want him haunting me is to be like, "Hey, man, I'm so sorry. Uh, I, I, I feel, I feel for you, man. I do." Um. Okay. Give you a couple more here. Um, a couple more. <clears throat> Elvis Presley, too. <laughs> He'd be a lot of fun. He'd just sing and say random things to you in an accent. Next question, after like a 15-minute tangent. So, you are the leader of the last civilization left on Earth after a deadly virus <laughs> kills nearly all humanity. What are you naming your utopia? Why is it mine, though? Because you're one of the last people left. And for some reason, people put their trust in you. That's a bad <laughs> idea. Let's call it... Uh, I don't want it to involve milk. It's Milk is not allowed. Uh, <laughs> so are you just, like, not going to allow people to drink milk in your civilization? No, fuck that. Are you crazy? It's banned. Wild. Why do we need milk? In I mean, we can use it for baking. But you go to jail for drinking milk. <laughs> you go to jail and you have to you have to throw up. <laughs> You're sentenced to throw up milk. Oh my god. <laughs> With the milk thing, you could just you could use that as torture for people that are like lactose. Like your Dude, waterboard waterboard people with milk milk board. <laughs> you guys are evil. <laughs> Active imagination, what can I say? Mm. Uh I don't know. I just call it utopia. I just call it something stupid and plain like that just for giggles. You know, they and always shit. would ask. I remember in school, they made us do like an assignment like this where it was like, you have your own civilization. What are you naming it? And it's like, yes, I remember they did that with us, too. And I was not I did not. Mm -mm, I didn't fucking do that project. Somebody else did that project for me. <laughs> it's like, I don't know what the hell I'm supposed to name it. Like, I'm awful with doing names. Did you guys ever have the one in science where you'd have to like combine two animals to make one? Nope, that's no. fucking wild. Are you kidding me? Are you saying like real, like legit animals? Like yeah, so like animal a parts. shark and an octopus. Wait, 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 wait. Back it up, back it up. You did you draw these animals or did you literally have yeah. these animals? Oh, draw no. them. Not okay, actually you drew them. Here, I'm thinking you're like animal parts, and you're like so. I know. I found the dissection because you said science. Yeah. No, I we did that. We did the drawing thing. Yeah. yeah, I did not. We Can did you imagine? That. I'm not very good at drawing, but I think I, I really kick some ass in that project. Say we finish this interview up and you step outside of your home and find a lottery ticket that wins $10 million. What are you going to do with that money? Dude, I don't fucking know. I would not want that money. <laughs> it's scary money. I don't want it. I'd probably like pay off the things that I need to pay off. And then I would just like 
I don't know, put some away and then I just probably like figure out something else to do with like the other shit. Like, I don't okay, know. So I wouldn't want it. A smarter option as to what most people would do. I, yeah, I mean, I wouldn't want, I don't need anything. I don't want anything. Like, if I were to get that like right now, yeah, I'd literally just save some, save a good amount and then pay off what I need to and just like, I don't know. That's find not a bad idea. That's, that's not a bad idea. Do you have any student loans or anything? Yeah, I have a few. I went to college for like two years and I didn't finish. It was like COVID time when I dropped out and COVID was part of the reason that I dropped out, but it also just felt like I wasn't doing the right thing. It just was like, God, this is like, I, I just didn't feel right. I was going for elementary education. Mm-hmm. So I Man, did not want to be around kids anymore. Yeah, I could never do any sort of education. <sighs> Fuck no, I can't be around kids. I don't like little kids. I middle school kids are just hell yeah and high school yeah. kids like that that gets like the complex subjects where I'm just like whew, over my head yep. mm-hmm. I got a I got a thing for this uh I got fired um oh, so goodness, I took goodness. a substitute teaching job lasted one week and I got fired Here's why? why so <sighs> I taught middle school for a day and all of these like eighth grade guys were like, Mr. Eldridge, come play volleyball and basketball with us. And I was like, oh, dude, fuck yeah, let's go. So here I am. I'm just shooting hoops and playing volleyball. I didn't spike the ball in a kid's face or anything, but like I was being active and I got a phone call the next day and they were like, hey, you're not supposed to do that. And I'm like, excuse me? You're not allowed to play like play games with the kids. Yeah, no, I'm like, what? dude, I'm almost, the, some of these kids are taller than me and I'm six foot two and way more. I'm like 166. I'm a skinny dude, mm-hmm. right? And some of these kids are beefy, right? Yeah. Jesus Christ, dude. That's so weird. So then <laughs> they let me off of the warning. They were like, hey, you're new. You're young. We get it. Just, you can't do that. Okay. Now, mind you, I didn't get a booklet. I didn't get a video. I didn't get anything. I was just thrown into the wolves like, here, you're going to go do this. So the next, like, two days go by, and I'm doing second grade for the day. God. <laughs> there there were these two that were just problem children, okay? Mm-hmm. Just problem children. And we got caught up with everything. We were done, Right. And normally when I was their age and our teacher was out and there was a sub, they'd be like, who wants to watch a movie or who wants to watch Mm -hmm. some TV? And I just kind of sat there and I'm like, okay, well, what do these kids want to watch? And had I only put on an educational video, uh, like the one we had watched moments before, I would have been fine. I put on SpongeBob. I didn't think anything of it. Apparently, some people just don't like SpongeBob. Yeah, no kidding. And I got a phone call the next Tuesday, and they were like, dude, what the fuck are you doing? Why are you showing these second grade kids SpongeBob? And I'm like, they got all of their work done early. I just thought they deserved a treat for being good. And they were like, you're fired. You're stupid. And I'm like, okay. Neato. Oh, man. When we were yeah. when I was in school, it was like you finish your work early, you get to play like games, catch up on any other homework if you want, or they would put on like a te- like they'd put on YouTube videos or something. I don't know. Well, like second grade though, like it's so different. Like they usually like plan it out so that you don't like get stuff done early. Like hmm. that I don't know. When I was in second grade, we always got shit done early and then they really? would like they would throw on a movie or something or let us play up. Heads up, seven up. Don't know oh, if you've ever played that. that. Was a certified classic. I didn't yeah. know what that game was until high school. Yo, we played that from kindergarten to grade 12. Hell yeah. We have reached the final question, and Ian is going to be asking it because I have no oh. idea what this is about. <laughs> so, all right, Weezy. You have found an elephant. This elephant is yours for the day. You can do whatever you want with him or her. I, it it doesn't really matter, I guess, but the possibilities are endless. You have to return it to the zoo the next day. 
what are you doing and why? How big is this elephant? Uh, well, how big do you want the elephant to be? It could be a big guy, a little guy. I want to make it a little guy so I can get on it and ride it. And I don't know. <laughs> I just take it to, you know, I wouldn't even bring it back to the zoo the next day. Fuck that. I take it to the jungle where it belongs. <laughs> a rescue mission is what a we rescue have. mission for an elephant yeah <laughs> but that does make me think of there used to be this tv show on when i was younger i cannot remember what the hell it was called but it was like this this girl that had a pet elephant and then she was like an elephant princess type deal yeah what <laughs> yeah what is right like i i watched it maybe like once or twice like i was really young when the show came out but what the fuck? That just made me think of that show. So she would turn into an elephant? No, or... no, 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 no. Like she was, she, this she tiny was elephant, the stuffed elephant would be like a big ass elephant. And then she would be like the princess. Let me do some research really Yeah, quick. yeah. I need to know what you're talking about. Oh, a UAG case. Fuck yeah. That's a good case for your phone. The TV show is called Drumroll, please. <laughs> The Elephant Princess. I believe this is the one. Oh my god, wow, we could have guessed, guessed 2008, that. and it had two seasons. That's it. Because it didn't. It wasn't very good. But this was you the show. You know, it looks familiar. Yeah, this was the show. And it would air on was Family on Channel. Disney? Yeah, Disney. Yeah, it would air on the Disney Channel. I, yeah, this looks familiar. And I think I remember seeing this and being like, what the yeah is that? i i might have i might have got like the description wrong of this i, I was just trying to remember but you know <laughs> yeah she it, it's a girl that is a teen who discovers she is the princess of a magical kingdom called i'm not even gonna pr try to pronounce that <laughs> uh yeah she soon learns that she will have to defend her kingdom from evil and darkness <laughs> whoa <laughs> i don't know about you but I what think a crazy story, bro. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Ian, you gotta go watch this. <laughs> ah. Uh, uh. I have a hair in my glass. Blech. You know how I feel about hair. <laughs> You're also Blech. paranoid with hair. Nasty. Blech. I have a bad phobia of hair. That makes sense. Actually, hair is kind of whack. It's gross. It's, as little kids would say, disgusting. 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 I've Dis gotten into the bad habit of saying disgusting because I always make fun of little kids. So now I'll literally be out somewhere and just like, that's disgusting. I give it a Gordon Ramsay. That's disgusting. That's disgusting. disgusting. <laughs> Nothing's better than Gordon Ramsay calling people idiot sandwiches. Okay, so... We have reached the point in the show where we do sign language. Perfect. Okay. I know some. Let's do it. So, since your name is Wheezy, I was hoping we would do the elephant princess. We could. All right, bet. Give me. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> no, you. I got it. I, I could. You just got to give me like 10 seconds. I know where to look. All right. So, elephant is elephant. Wait. Do it slower. Is it? Oh, it's just that. So it's like a, just a closed hand is what you're telling me. Yeah, elephant. I think it should be this. You know? I thought, because I thought my teacher did it like this. <laughs> she was actually, she was a deaf teacher too. I don't know. Oh, mine is too. Our professor's Ron. He's deaf. Really? He's fucking awesome. Interesting. We love him. We love Ron. Okay, but yeah, that. And then princess is P. Right, you're gonna take P. What? And now we're gonna finger spell Wheezy. Okay. W. <laughs> H. Wait, go. Okay. <laughs> e. Bounce it. Because that's two E's. Uh -huh. Z. Uh huh. E. Why? Oh, no. There's no E before the Y. It's just Y. Y. Z Y. Oh. oh, it's on my screen, you idiot. <laughs> <laughs> um. Ah, you dumb motherfucker.
<laughs> Why are you so mean to yourself? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I just kind of give myself a pep talk every morning in the mirror in the bathroom. I'm like, listen here, you motherfucker. You're gonna listen go. here, you fucking piece of shit. You're yeah. going to do better today. And if you don't, I'm going to kick your ass. Yeah, like that. <laughs> I just roll out of bed every morning and look in the mirror and I'm like, and then just walk out. <laughs> Here goes, ah, you got this tiger. Yeah. Like, that's it. That's it. I roll out of bed, look in my mirror, and then I go to the bathroom. Yeah. I just take a shit in the morning. A morning bowel movement is the best bowel. Yes. Right. Yes. Especially after drinking. Oh, yeah. Yes. Two thumbs up. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming on the show today, Wheezy. It was a lot of fun. Thank you for having me. It was really fun being here. I Thank you. It was great. <laughs> All right, guys. We'll see you next time on Radioactive. Bye.